Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show here on STV. The main talking points on tonight's programme. Stuart Armstrong is the player of the month for March. Jack Ross lands manager of the month in the championship. And fans want to behave ahead of Aberdeen Rangers on Sunday at Petaudry. Just a few of the talking points we'll be discussing tonight. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin. I'm delighted to say Scotland assistant manager Mark McGee is our bitroom guest. And over uh, the course of the programme, we'll get Mark's thoughts on all things Scotland, England coming up. And of course, uh, get a little insight into what he's up to nowadays and what he hopes to be up to in the near future. So one of the uh, guys who's at the centre of attention today is a Scotland international now, Mark McGee. Um, it's Stuart Armstrong. He's won Player of the Month. It was, uh, you know, an unbelievable month March for him and a Scotland debut. Yeah, and what a debut! I think Gordon himself said he's, he doesn't think he's seen a better debut. He's the manager's entitled to say that, and I couldn't disagree with that. I thought he was fabulous, you know, and uh, his form for Celtic this year has, you know, he's transformed. You know, he's suddenly become the player that everyone. You know, knew he had the potential to be, and under Brendan, he's emerged. And uh, I thought his performance um, in, in the last international there he was outstanding. Yeah, and uh, this is what uh, Stuart Armstrong himself, who received the uh, Player of the Month for March, uh, he was talking today about uh, playing for Scotland. Nice, very nice compliments, and obviously, having um, been my first first appearance, I wanted it to be to be good and to to do well. And to take something from the game, so um, managed to achieve that. So it's a very nice, uh, very nice debut. Yep, uh, this is off the back of uh, Celtic involved in action last night against Paddock Thistle. It ended 1-1. Let's have a look at some of the papers and reaction to some of the results from last night. Uh, first of all, uh, the Daily Records um, beat the Reds or it's dead. This is after Rangers uh, slipping up against Kilmarnock at Rugby Park with a nil-nil draw. Uh, the Sun, again, gobsmacked. This is focusing on the uh, spitting uh, that's alleged for Sam Nicholson towards a match official, which resulted in a red card. And uh, the Daily Mail spitting mad refers to that as well. And uh, Brendan Rogers quoted defending his changes last night. In the end, it ended 1-1. Their unbeaten run continues, Ruffy. Um, you know, entitled to make these changes because he uh, has mentioned, the Celtic manager, that all roads lead to the double header against Rangers. Yeah, and he's already stated that uh, you know he wants to give some big players a rest over the long, long season. You know, not only physically but mentally. So if he can get them back in hundred percent, it's always a bonus for them. But I think the bit you missed out there as well, Patrick. That's what left out five players as well for the weekend. So. They must have thought they were going in for an easy game last night. Yeah, um, good line, Ruffy. Always <laughs> uh, likes to <laughs> always likes to, to go incognito when he's going out in Glasgow. And I hasten to add, it's not tonight. Um, yeah, I don't want to take anything away from Paddock Thistle because this is a Paddock Thistle side with Alan Archibald that are looking to finish in the top six and are a good bet to do it now, Mark. Absolutely. I think that um, you know watching them and playing against them all season, I think they've been consistent. Um, I think that they've had a little bit more than a lot of teams throughout the season, and you know I've seen them play some really good stuff. When at times it was a really poor pitch at at, at, at Fairhill, you know. So um, I think if they finish in the top six, they'll have you know thoroughly deserved that. Yeah. Um, as far as Rangers are concerned, yet again, Ruffy, it's uh, it's now twelve points the difference between themselves and Aberdeen. I think the horse has bolted on this one. I don't think there's any chance they'll catch Aberdeen in second place, but. All roads lead to Petaudry mm -hmm. for them after last night's slip-up. They need to win. Yeah, and then sometimes you, you, when you get these games, you want to catch a team that's not playing particularly well. Unfortunately for Rangers, Aberdeen are playing well. And even when they're not playing well, they're still winning and, and not losing goals more more to the point. So Aberdeen will go into the game with a lot of confidence. And I think uh, Rangers have got all the, the answers to come up with. Yeah. What do you make of your old team, Mark? Well, I don't think they're one of the, the, the worst two teams in the league, not by a, a stretch, and therefore I would expect them to emerge. Um, I think they've got work to do. I think that last night would be a disappointing result for them. Um, we've done well in recent games, in recent years against Hamilton, um, so that I, I think they'll be disappointed in that, but um, I, I expect them to come through. Yep, uh, and stay in the division. What do you make of Sunday's game, Aberdeen Rangers? Well, you know, I, I see the Rangers' situation differently. I think that Rangers have only come up 
I think they've changed their manager mid-season and I think therefore not too much should be expected of them and I think the idea that they should be finishing second is is probably a little bit um, not far-fetched but it's a little bit ambitious. Aberdeen are you know a few years ahead of, of uh, Rangers at the moment in their development and I think Aberdeen are entitled to think that they are going to be the second best and prove again to be the second best team so I think what Rangers want to do is they want to prepare themselves as best they can for next season. Yeah, uh, Was it an easy decision for Gordon to bring in Tony Doherty? Yeah, I mean, there was candidates and we discussed it all and I have to say, regardless of how those discussions went, you know, it was a brilliant addition to the to the team, to the staff. Um, it, the work he did himself that Gordon asked him to do was top drawer and was everything that we wanted. And as a, as a colleague around the Scotland camp, it was a pleasure to work with and, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, he'd certainly be welcomed back. Yeah, oh, OK. Um, I don't think we want to dwell on it too much, Ruffy, but, you know, the police have issued today just a, a note of warning to fans to behave ahead of this clash. Aberdeen Rangers, it's always been feisty before because of various reasons, but um, mm. I, I, I don't know. I don't sense as big an edge in this one because I think Rangers fans are, are more resigned to the fact that maybe second is beyond them. Yeah, and I think I think everything depends on the day. You know what happens during the ninety minutes. You know, obviously how that game peters out. You know the decisions for or against or whatever. But you would like to think that the both sets of fans would uh, grow up a bit. You know, and just enjoy the football instead of after a really good game we're talking about was happening out, away from it. Yeah. Okay. Here's a look at the results from uh, last night and the implications. We'll show you in the uh, table. That draw against Partick Thistle, Rangers obviously slipping up at Rugby Park. It was stalemate in the Lancashire Derby and St Johnson defeated Hearts by a goal to nil and we'll hear from Tommy Wright and talk about him in the next part of the programme. Just before we go into the break, um, Mark, uh, I've got to touch on first of all the Motherwell situation. Ruffy and myself were surprised that maybe they pulled the trigger, um, we thought, too early. What was your feeling? Is it one of disappointment? Oh, huge disappointment. You know, I think that uh, we were entitled, given the team we were and team we are, to have, have some bad results, but made some really good performances. Um, you know, I was as surprised as anyone and, yeah, hugely disappointed because I felt as if we were on a... I was given a brief, you know, a year past in October by uh, Les Hutchison and as far as I'm concerned, we were on that path. So, yeah, it was a, a big, big disappointment to me. But, you know, there you go, you move on. Um, we've asked me already about them staying up. I think they, they have enough. I think they've signed some good players, great characters in the summer, and uh, I think they've not been disappointed with those signings, and I think they, those boys will bring us through. Yeah, first stint was good. Um, second stint didn't end the way I, I think you would have wanted it to, but no ill feeling. No. You know, I, you know apart from even at Motherwell, you know, I've been sacked six times. Yeah. And, and being sacked in, as a modern football manager is part and parcel of it. You have to be thick-skinned, but you also have to be pragmatic. You know, whatever happened, happened, and you move on. I've had 960-odd games, whatever it is, as a manager. Um, I've had really good times and really difficult times. Um, I don't think I'm, I don't feel as if I'm finished. I said all along, I've been talking about getting a thousand games. I'd still like to get a thousand games. Yeah, absolutely. Not another thousand. No, no, absolutely not, because uh, um, I would lose a tenner then, because I just don't <laughs> fancy you to make, <laughs> to make another thousand. But nevertheless, just before we hit the break, you, you clearly want to get back involved in management somewhere, north or south? Uh, I mean, I, I, I live in Brighton, you know, and uh, I'm back down there now. Um, so the south would suit me better, you know. Um, I've got a little boy and I'd like to be staying close to him now. Um, so I'll, I'll look in the summer. I'm not looking yet, but in the summer, I'll, I'll see what's around. Here's a line. Can we beat England? Ruffy, maybe not as um, positive as me that we can get something out of it. Well, I think you have to have your best players. I think, um, as, as the time was the other night um, against Slovenia, we had the best players on that day that were in the best form and in the best condition to go and play that game and the one is the game. When it comes to the England game, we've got to hope that we've got the right players available. If we have, I think there's a performance uh, within them that can certainly take something from the game. I think that um, we were disappointed with what happened at Wembley um, and I think we know we can do better than that. But uh, we also know how difficult a game it's going to be, but I think there is definitely a, a team in there and there's a, a performance in there that can get us a result. Yeah, um, coming up after the break, I, I, I want to touch base with you on something which is 
amazingly um, out with football that you've been at the forefront of. It's a, it's a game. Um, Motherwell again? Uh, no, it's, it's not Motherwell. It's a, it's a game that I think might, might transform your life. Who knows? I hope it does. Um, we're going to talk about a game that Mark's had an idea for and it's come to fruition. Uh, we'll find out about it right after this break and this question. Four caps, should have been more. Mark McGee is our bookroom guest here in the uh, studio tonight. And uh, we've been talking all things Motherwell, Scotland, ambition. And of course, one other thing that I think uh, you've come out of left field with, Mark McGee, is suddenly you're a gamer because you had an idea and suddenly um, in the last 24 hours it's come to fruition. Yeah, well... I mean, over the years I've had a couple of projects like this and uh, they've not always kicked on the way this one is at the moment. Um, it's called The Name Game. Um, it's a word game that um, goes back to when I was uh, even in the bus at Aberdeen and, you know, contrived it and, uh, and now I've sort of transformed it into an app and uh, it was published yesterday on all the app stores. So anyone who wants to try it, the name game on all the app stores, and uh, it's just a, it's just a bit of fun for you know. Literally, I'm sounding a bit cliched, but for all the family. But that's what it is. Yeah, uh, uh, Ruffy, I, I, I've been playing it, and I have to say, <laughs> it's yeah. absolutely addictive. But not only addictive to me, I could actually think of footballers bored out of their skull <laughs> on a bus heading to somewhere like Inverness, thinking. This is the perfect way to while away a few hours. Not only footballers, any sport, you know, when your, your, your time is, is your own, you know, Martin knows yeah. what it's like when you go away for maybe a, a game and you're three or four days and you've you're a lot of time yourself, so that'd be an ideal time to use it. Yeah, um, and of course, at the end of it, you know, if it's a success, will you change as a person, Mark, or will you just be your usual self? No, no, I'll change. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. definitely change. <laughs> I'm happy with that. I certainly won't be back in here. No. <laughs> That's true. We'll be, we'll be Skyping you from somewhere. Hopefully Barbados. Um, OK, uh, we wish you well with it because it, it really is. It's, uh, it's one of those addictive games. And of course, anybody who likes puzzles, Mark McGee, who'd have thought a gamer? Um, but uh, it's absolutely fantastic. From uh, one game back to uh, the nation's favourite. And last night, St Johnson came up with a result, which was a crucial one at that uh, they defeated Hearts by a goal to nil suddenly Ruffy um, I think a lot of Saints fans and, and certainly the players will be thinking okay fourth looks really good mm -hmm. with a five point advantage over Hearts some might be thinking they can catch Rangers yeah I think uh, all credit to the players and the manager after the episodes of the weekend there you know they, they, they got themselves together you know and moved on obviously a lot of publicity about what happened at the weekend but again Tommy Wright has come up with the goods. I think he's been a fantastic. He's had a fantastic season, and we all talk about manager of the season. I think his name has to get a mention as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I was talking about St Johnston fans um, just earlier. I caught up with one in particular, Ollie Whale, and the first question was, "Okay, great win over Hearts. Uh, are you possibly thinking about finishing third? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, the gap between us and Hearts below us is probably it's just slightly lower than the gap between us and Rangers above us. So I feel we can maybe try and push on and even even get third. Yeah, and as far as St Johnson are concerned this season, I mean, nothing will ever eclipse that Scottish Cup final victory. But um, Tommy Wright just keeps raising the bar again and again and again. Yeah, it's quite incredible because uh, we've definitely got one of the, the lower budgets in the league. But I feel Tommy, as a manager, he, he has the right balance, probably uh, as a as a disciplinarian and also a friend to his players, and uh, he gets their respect, and uh, and that shows on the pitch. I think every week. Yeah. What about the what about the players? Is there anyone in particular that's uh, caught your eye and has been an ever consistent, ever present in that side? Well, you've got you've got the old the old school like uh, Stephen Anderson, of course, the captain who's been there twelve years now or so. Um, you got guys like that, Liam Craig, Murray Davidson, Chris Miller, um, Alan Manis, who have been there for a long time, and that's that's part of what makes St Johnston um, so consistent is that level of uh, level of consistency within the team each week, and uh, not many new signings required each season either. It'd be just uh, maybe three or four each season just to to supplement what we've already got. 
Well, I'm looking at the battle for fourth, first of all. I mean, uh, St. Johnston have got Inverness, Cali, Thistle and Aberdeen. The Hearts have got Dundee and Kilmarnock uh, before yeah. the split. Uh, I would presume you'd like that little bit of cushion before you eventually have to face Hearts again. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, the two fixtures coming up are, are tough ones. Um, away against Inverness is one where I could potentially see us slipping up a wee bit, uh, despite... Uh, our away form being really good this season, um, but we're prone to to perform better against the, the the top sides. So I'd actually fancy our chances more against Aberdeen in that last match can before just, the split. Can I ask you, as a St Johnston fan, how do you feel week in week out when most of my colleagues, including myself, always tip Tommy Wright for a job elsewhere? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's understandable. I think uh, it's. It's surprising that he's still here, but he seems very satisfied to where he's living and uh, being manager at Saints. So I think it would take something special to prize him away. Maybe when the Northern Ireland vacancy comes up again, that might be an option for him. But until then, when there's any rumours in the media, we as supporters, I don't think we feel too concerned at the moment. OK, I've got to ask you the final question. We've been talking about just staying in front of Hearts. Do you have confidence that you can maybe catch Rangers and finish third? I think we can. Um, obviously, a lot of the media have talked about the battle for second place between Aberdeen and Rangers, but I think the gap is significantly less between us ourselves and Rangers for third. So I think that's maybe something that will get talked about more in the, in the coming weeks, and, and rightly so, because uh, Rangers seem to be stalling a bit. As a confidence in Johnson fan, um, Tommy Wright, he's been linked with more than a few jobs, Mark. Yeah, well, I played with Tommy at Newcastle. You know, he was a good goalkeeper. He was a great athlete, actually. He wouldn't believe it. Well, he wouldn't believe it looking at either of us. But, um, uh, you know, done a fantastic job. Don't forget they finished fourth last year. Yeah. You know, because we were in that battle for fourth and fifth with them. Uh, we ended up fifth at Motherwell. They ended up fourth again. And now they're in the race for, for third. That is the progress, you know. That, so last year they were in a battle for fifth and fourth. This year in a battle for fourth and third. You know, for me, that's all the progress that could be expected of Tommy Wright and St Johnson, but it is progress. Yeah, and, and the manager himself uh, has conceded that uh, Europe is a major bonus again. Well, again, potentially it's all lifts and butts and we'd, we'd know more in the next couple of weeks with the semi-finals. And, uh, I think first and foremost, we've just got to concentrate and try and get fourth place. And we know if we, if we can get another uh, shot at Europe, what that brings to the club, it brings... Um, you know, profiles of the club it brings um, at least one good away trip for the, for the for the fans and it brings a lot of excitement to the start of the season so it's something that uh, we know that if we can finish fourth that it's a possibility might happen Yeah, good stuff for St Johnson difficult times uh, ahead for Hearts still waiting to click into gear under Ian Cathro I'm going to switch your attention uh, to the Championship and of course uh, to Hibernian because there's a volatile situation that could emerge at the weekend. Morton uh, against Hibbs, uh, Ruffy. Darren McGregor's won his appeal, which uh, again uh, might surprise a few, but he's won his appeal against that red card. He'll be able to play in that match. Yes, and he's a big, big player uh, for them this year. And I think both managers will be sensible enough to sort of uh, move on. You know, obviously, I think the only way that something would happen there if there was another incident in front of the two dugouts, because the dugouts down there are, are pretty close together, uh, and anything can happen again. Let's hope that isn't the case. You know, let's hope we're talking about the football because Morton and Hibs have been fantastic this year. Yeah, and of course, both managers uh, are facing uh, SFA charges as well. This is Neil Lennon's take on it. Well, it's, I mean, I'm going to see what they say. I'll have to go to a hearing. And it's on the, it's due on the 20th, and you know that's not ideal for me, obviously. So we'll try and maybe get it put back. Um, why it's been delayed to that date, I do not know. Um, so, you know, Darren's been dealt with, Kudos has been dealt with, so why can't the rest of us be dealt with quicker? Anyway, I'll just wait and see. I've seen the report. You know, I'll contest it as vigorously as I can and see what the outcome is. Well, you know from many a journey up to the SFA, you'll plead your case and then you get a ban. Yeah, well, that's kind of the way it is. Um, you know, but as far as going back to the game, you know, um, both Neil and Duff, you know, are great characters, but they're also intelligent men, you know. I mean, uh, you know, Duff's one of the funniest people, you know, in the game. He's, he does things with a sense of humour at times as well, and that'll be fine on Saturday. I don't see any issues at all.
Yeah, absolutely. Um, we hope it's uh, all about the football on Saturday. We'll be covering that game and hopefully you can join us on STD uh, at two o'clock uh, because over the four hours uh, we will discuss all the games, interviews and of course bring you right up to date with every goal as it hits the back of the net. Um, my thanks to Mark McGee uh, for joining us here. We wish Scotland, Mark and Gordon the very best of luck on June 10th against England. Um, here's hoping the whole nation is behind them before it and well and truly behind them after it as well and we wish him well uh, with uh, the board game as well because um, I'm addicted to it already. Thanks to Mark McGee. Join us uh, tomorrow on the programme, Friday. It all starts at half past six. Hugh McDonald of the Daily Mail is a regular bookroom guest from Ruffy, myself, and Mark. Thanks for watching tonight. Good night.